Activists claimed that the police were targeting the black community and purposefully killing unarmed black men. As the false claims of racial targeting spread, so did the anger and violence. Throughout the summer, Mateo and his family were shocked and worried as they watched on the news where neighborhoods around LA were being burned and looted. You just got a small taste of right-wing propaganda produced by PragerU specifically for your kids. And now that propaganda has been approved for Florida schools, which means that if you live in Florida and your kid goes to public school, they could be taught one of the following lessons. A cartoon Booker T. Washington distorting the history of the Civil War. A narrator explaining that embracing climate denialism is akin to participating in the Warsaw Uprising. An instructional video telling girls that conforming to gender stereotypes is a great way to embrace their femininity. A dramatization of the supposedly civilizing benevolent era of British colonial rule in India. If that all sounds positively racist and Orwellian to you, well, congratulations, you are a normal person. But this is going to be something that is offered to schools in Florida now, which isn't too surprising if you've been following along. I mean, you could argue that it's par for the course, considering that the state is now supposedly teaching about the quote-unquote benefits of slavery. Not to mention the fact that they also banned an African-American AP studies course and all LGBTQ plus material for all grades. And this is all happening because the goal isn't to educate, it's to indoctrinate. So do you know how they keep constantly claiming that the left wants to indoctrinate your kids with CRT and woke ideologies? Actually, they're the ones who want to indoctrinate your kids with propaganda. And the propaganda that they're using is not even subtle. Case in point. Despite our nation not always living up to our declaration that all men are created equal, I am still so proud and thankful to be an American. Even though you were a slave? Exactly. Because I was and not anymore. So that was Booker T. Washington explaining to cartoon characters Leo and Layla, who traveled back in time to 1910 to have that conversation with him, by the way, that even though he was a slave, he's still very much proud to be an American. Because that's certainly something that you want to emphasize when you're teaching kids about slavery. Yes, we did all of these terrible things, but you should still love America because this former slave loves America, so you should too. It's just so clownish right and the goal very clearly is not to inform and educate it's to indoctrinate and what's also bizarre about that clip is that booker t washington according to prager U, is also a fan of the economics of milton friedman now keep in mind they had that conversation in 1910 milton friedman wasn't born until 1912 but for some reason that's the flavor of economics that booker t washington again a former slave thought that it was necessary to push on Leo and Layla. Let's listen. So, if we can take care of ourselves by learning skills and working hard and improving who we are, then it won't be so bad if life gets unfair. And it can all start with you making yourself some snacks. It's kind of like being able to do more for yourself not only gives you freedom, but also gives you a shield against people trying to hold you back. That is exactly right. I hope this is the lesson you kids came looking for. That's right, Leo. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps and remember that accepting government handouts is never commendable unless you're a multinational corporation. You know, at this point, I would not be surprised if they got Harvey Milk to teach kids a lesson about why gender ideology is bad or something like that, although they probably wouldn't feature an openly gay character. But you get the point, right? They are bringing back these people from history and they are bastardizing their memories, what they stood for, all so they can brainwash children. And in PragerU's video announcing that they're officially a vendor for Florida schools, well, they suggested that this is only the beginning of their educational conquest. Friends, I'm ecstatic to make this groundbreaking announcement. PragerU is now making it into schools. A couple of years ago, we launched PragerU Kids because parents have been frustrated. Teachers have been frustrated. We have seen that our schools have been hijacked by the left. They have been politicized. They have been used by union bosses. They have been doing everything under the sun, not for our children. And so we have launched PragerU Kids and we started providing great edutainment, educational entertainment for children across America. But we didn't just stop there. Now we're actually making turnkey curriculum content for your schools. 
And the state of Florida just announced that we are now becoming an official vendor. This means that if you are a teacher in Florida, you cannot be fired for using PragerU content. You can also rely on our resources in your classrooms. And we are just getting started. Additional states are signing up. Go to our website, PragerU.com, and find out which other states have been working closely with us so that we become an approved vendor in additional states across America. You should know that the left is trying to fight us. They're trying to take us out of the schools and we need your support. So please go to PragerU.com and sign our petition to keep PragerU in schools. Actually, don't do that. But it's important to know that they're already anticipating pushback and they have a plan to mitigate the blowback. But PragerU is not alone, believe it or not, because even though they were approved in schools, well, Turning Point USA's effort to push back against supposed woke indoctrination in higher education has only expanded since they got started. And Charlie Kirk announced that 50 new college and high school field organizers are being trained at TPUSA's headquarters. And he announced that TPUSA actually has more high school chapters than college College chapters, which is something he pointed out in response to this article from The Hill that talks about how 12th grade boys are trending conservative. Now, right wing indoctrination in education is a serious issue, and I don't want to downplay that, and I don't want to downplay the role that Turning Point USA has had in brainwashing students across the country, but correlation does not necessarily equal causation, so it doesn't prove that Turning Point USA specifically is driving this change. But there is a change that's occurring. I'll though it is being somewhat overstated. But typically what we see when we look at public opinion polls is that Gen Z is overwhelmingly left-leaning and liberal. And yeah, that's true, but mainly because there are so many girls who are younger that are liberal and left-leaning that they kind of skew the entire generation to the left. And when it comes specifically to the poll cited in that Hill article that Charlie Kirk shared, well, it contends that most 12th grade boys are apolitical, but the ones who are politically active are far more likely to be conservative than liberal. They explain, in annual surveys over the last three years, roughly one quarter of high school seniors self-identified as conservative or very conservative on the Monitoring the Future survey, a scholarly endeavor that dates to the 1970s. Only 13% of boys identified as liberal or very liberal in those years. In the 2022 Monitoring the Future survey, the largest group of senior boys, more than two-fifths, claimed no politics at all, answering the liberal conservative question with none of the above or I don't know. Nearly one-fifth identified as moderate. Only 36% selected liberal or conservative as an ideology, and only there did the trend emerge. So to the extent that 12th grade boys are political, they are much more likely to be conservative, at least according to this poll. But still, most of them are likely to be apolitical. And that to me makes sense because I don't think that I fully developed my political views until I was in college. But if you asked me back in high school, if I was conservative or liberal, I probably would have self-identified as conservative as well because I was raised in a very socially conservative evangelical household, right? But the apolitical nature is exactly what these propagandists are looking at because that is a blank slate. And that's why the propaganda is so important because if the slate is clean, then you can kind of fill that void with your own political views. So a lot of these high school boys, they also could have been apolitical as well, but perhaps something got them into politics and made them conservative. I mean, there's a number of things, right? Jordan Peterson's self-help book was popular with young men. Perhaps they started listening to him, and then they found the Daily Wire through him, and then that kind of indoctrinated them into right-wing politics. Or maybe they're unsuccessful with the ladies at school, so they seek out the help of pickup artists, and then they end up discovering Andrew Tate and the Manosphere. Or perhaps they discover Steven Crowder or Ben Shapiro on YouTube through one of their pop culture rants or comedy sketches. I mean, these apolitical 12th graders are simply conservative voters in waiting. They're just waiting to be activated, according to these propagandists, which is why this effort is so widespread. But even though right-wing indoctrination and education is becoming a bigger problem, young men in particular are still going to fall down the right-wing rabbit hole regardless if it's being shoved down their throats or not. But still, Gen Z overall skews left and liberal, which in theory is a sign for hope. 
but don't become complacent because the right certainly isn't, right? Hence the relentless push for them to spread their propaganda in schools. Informing and educating younger generations must be an active effort by the left, and this is something that the right is cognizant of and they're organized to make sure that their vision is shoved down the throats of children. So the left should be organized as well. But ultimately, when it comes to these types of propaganda videos, we won't necessarily know the impact that they have until a long time from now. But it's cause for concern because even though polls might give us hope about Gen Z and how the future generation is much more progressive, things can change, right? Political views, are dynamic they're not static and one year you can think something and then you agree with the right on one issue and then you start agreeing with them on more issues things can change so that's why you can't take anything for granted right what looks like a future political win or you know an end of the republican party given current polls just means that they're going to adjust their strategy and they're either going to change the rhetoric or ramp up the propaganda, and that's what we're seeing. And so the point of this video is for me to just tell you to be aware of it, not that you weren't already aware of it, but also it's important to point out because as they accuse everyone of pushing woke indoctrination in schools and corporate media, well, they're the ones who are actually doing it, which makes sense considering every accusation is a con confession. So um, yeah, we'll leave that there. That's the type of propaganda that you're seeing in, or that you will see in some schools in Florida, possibly, and perhaps other schools as well. Woke mom. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke test. Woke ideology. Woke Olympics. Woke ideology. 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 Woke ideology.